Yeah, well, it's I'm just saying low. the salt water itself it does not have any. Yeah, you're, and, and it's it's about the chemical reaction. So so part of that energy is being extracted from the other compounds you're putting into the whatever the catalyst is. So, but I'm not going to argue it. Okay, salt water is not a really good fuel oil. Um, but anyway, uh, you, know, you know, you get to Pyro's thing again, though. But Pyro again, it's another high tech solution. I'm saying if we go with the low tech ones, we can deal with a lot of this stuff, the stuff that's reliable, the stuff we know works. And, and it's just it's just the fact that you have to make the long-term investment, and that's where we're going to fail. Because, you know, we're not going to compromise today's lifestyle to build a better tomorrow. That's just not in the cards for the human fucking race. Gary, can I please just throw this hypothetical out there? Don't get mad at me. Don't get whatever. Let's just, just pretend get to it there quickly. was no it Okay, let's just pretend there was no oil, no no fossil fuels, whatever. The people that controlled salt water over fresh water were the champions. I'm gonna kill you. Okay? I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Control salt water. God, you really are fucking insane. <laughs> control salt water. <laughs> oh, oh God, yo, stop! Don't let it rain in the salt flats. Don't let anybody know there's a whole bunch of salt out there that they can mix with their water. Gary, I think it's a brilliant solution. Could you imagine someone waiting the 60 years to charge their iPhone from a home-built uh, a Leyden jar? I mean, it would work amazing. It's brilliant. It's it's completely flawless. Yeah, you don't have to eat like 700 grapefruit too. Maybe 700 grapefruit, you could charge your batteries on 700 grapefruit or something like that. Yeah, it only caught, but, but then you got to buy new electrolyte. You know, I mean, you got to buy new electrodes or whatever you call them. Uh oh, kissing again disturbs me, but it's all right. I guess it's okay. Just, the thing is, though, is if you control the script, salt water, you control the script the in my own mind. I will rewrite the script, and so it comes out for it's a very nice ending. My rewrite. Bandit, you're being incredibly annoying. Incredibly. I really think solar is the thing because not necessarily with the current yields, but there's a lot of potential to get a lot more yield, and the more you put into that, the better. And you can, you know, you can already, if you have a decent amount of sun, power an ordinary house with your refrigerator and a real, you know, electric washing machine and the rest. You know, just barely, and and so we're at the threshold of that. I mean, I I think that's where you need to to put it in, not like yeah, no, water but but you're, you're not getting it. All the energy on the earth is solar. All right, well, exactly. so, I mean, no, I am getting it. I mean, I am. Getting well, I'm just it. saying that there's no point in trying to capture it directly kinetically as the photons hit the earth. The trick is is to capture photons that are hitting a whole giant thing, like the entire fucking ocean is getting hit by photons, all right? And then that's knocking a whole bunch of fucking moisture into the fucking atmosphere, and you can capture the energy as that moisture falls, and that's the game. Well, no, that's true. I mean, actually, I mean, obviously, it's going to be multiple Nuke forces. The bitch. But, you know, another thing that's right in line with that is, uh, yeah, I just closed it right away, so I don't know if she's still making noise for everybody else. But um, another thing they've been trying uh, off Hawaii that's a good one is the temperature difference, which is basically a solar, you know, generated thing between the deep ocean and the top of the ocean. You can get energy from the fact that there's that temperature difference. It's basically solar energy. It's super passive. You just put these huge wires out and it's, it, you collect energy. I mean, it is true that it's all solar energy, basically. Yeah, I mean, we're solar energy. Uh, everything that moves is solar energy pretty much on planet Earth. Um, <clears throat> well, one of my unicorns is that I, I'm, I'm waiting for the quantum efficiency solar collection, which will just kick ass. I mean, we're going we're gonna to triple the... We're going we're gonna yeah, no, we'll to quadruple the, the price of the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You're quantum. Crap. No, it's going to be cheap, <laughs> Gary. Well, well, no, 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 no. There's got to be yeah, a way whatever. to make it cheap. Yeah, Leaves do it for yeah, pennies. Right. For pennies. right, yeah. Well, no, you say it's pennies, right? But you don't see how much them leaves really eat, okay? That they eat a true. ton of photons, okay, before 
they even start doing any of this growing shit. They eat a lot of photons. No, but they get like 95, 97% of the solar energy. But Over a whole fucking they, summer, though. Come on. They, it takes them a whole fucking summer to grow. They, they got to build all of those compounds to make the whole system work. All right? And we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to build all those compounds. It's like building that stupid saltwater grapefruit battery thing again all over again. So we're going to have to build, we have to make a whole bunch of grapefruits and stick a bunch of fucking things. I mean, no, it's, it's still a tremendous amount of work. And you know, well, you've got to appreciate a plant it's is collecting energy over a, a whole long period of time to be able yeah. to. It makes itself over that period of time. So you've you got to put in that you got to understand how much energy it took to make the plant. Well, it's true. I think there is a math there. It's easy to, to ignore, and I haven't really thought it all through in the sense of, you know, it's like any bio uh, diesel or any fuel like that. It takes a hell of a lot of space, and really, you know, per acre, there starts to be problems. But that's why I say build it at sea. Build it at sea. Yeah, and sea isn't too good either. Come on, bio business. Then you got competing energy. I mean, you got the moon Corrosive. tugging on it. You got the waves. Corrosive. You got the currents. You Corrosive. got fucking derricks flying off and oil spurting all over the fucking place. And you know who it's the fuck Corrosive. knows? What I mean, loose. the main Corrosive. argument against my sea solar energy idea is that people are like, you know what? You got to do it in the desert because it's so corrosive at sea that the maintenance is, is gonna be killer. And that's a good argument. But I say, fuck them. We're gonna do it at sea. Wait, Carol, I well, have to do it. Again, you're still going to argue. Ask question, please. You're all doing it the wrong way. Let the, let the earth do the collecting and just find the places where you can grab the potential energy where the earth has stored it and grab it at the, at the, grab it at the, at the, at the bulk pieces, the big boogers of energy. Gary, Gary, can I ask you a, a, a serious question, please? Well, I don't know if it's going to be serious. You're not asking very lucid or rational questions, but go ahead. Okay, listen, if we, if we could actually harness fusion, not fission, if we could actually harness fusion, make it cheap, easy, and clean, which it would be a lot cleaner than fission, which we've been using for all our nuclear power recently, would yeah, you be a really clean. It, would, it would shoot right the fuck through the planet and then zip right into the sun. I mean, <laughs> it's a little, little, your little plasma is going to run home, okay? So it's going to go through wherever you, you make it and then it's going to try to get back to the sun, okay? So good luck with that one, fella. Piro, actually, well, ben, if you ben, think ben, about the corrosive nature of salt this? water. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right, can I? Right, uh, ben. Hey, Bandit, uh, I actually had a tour of the National Ignition facility in Lawrence Livermore uh, a few months ago. I actually was uh, one of the uh, contractors who built the facility about 10 years ago. And uh, what they're trying to do is just what you're talking about, to harness the power of the uh, sun here on Earth. Uh, it's, it's highly experimental. It's highly theoretical. We don't know if we can do it or not. But uh, they are making progress. They are, they have, they are, uh, continually overcoming uh, many of the technological and scientific challenges of nuclear fusion. But, you know, it's, it's a long shot. It's a, it's a real Hail Mary pass. Now, as far as it, what, what, give me how a much second. you want to so, bet, how, uh, how much you want to bet the fucking Halon Collider is going to crash again? And then it's going to crash. I, you know, I could write you a script of how many times it's going to fail before they even get it up to speed. So, I mean, all this stuff, we're in way over our fucking heads. Way over. Well, we are well, we are in way over our heads. And, you know, I, I have no idea. They're, they're uh, slated to begin radiological testing. So I was told when I took the tour, uh, about now, actually. They probably have already started. Uh, so... They may they may do it, you know. They may they may make it happen. But I mean, to your your point, the point I wanted to respond to was, you know, where should we put our resources? Where should we devote our resources? And if I had a choice between spending eighty billion dollars to bail out an insurance company like AIG, that's a stupid comparison. 
Oh, come on. Wait, wait, just a well, second. Well, we all were going to or, make this or, choice. Well, if I had a choice between spending $2 trillion on the Iraq and, and Afghanistan war, yeah, I think I'd buy Twinkies for everybody. I mean, sure, everybody can come up with some better use of money. So that's not the question. Yeah, but the whole NIF, I mean, the, the whole NIF in its entirety only costs three and a half billion, and yet we spend eighty billion to bail out some fucking bankers who produce zero, nothing, nada, zero squared for society. When this thing may actually, you know, help us out, may actually prove to be the salvation of the human race. The human race. Uh, or the destruction of the human that's race. Exactly like said, that's, that's exactly my point. That's exactly my point. If we could actually harness human Yeah, if we could actually, 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 I mean, there's no, until you get some kind of theoretical diagram of exactly how you actually do it, how do you glean energy from something you can't contain? I mean, it is, it is in its, at its very core, fucktarded. Yeah, I don't think it's fucktarded It's absolutely at all. not. I, no, exactly. It's, it's absolutely not. And, and it's a lot cleaner than fission. And it's something that people have been working on for You, you for keep years. arguing about this cleanness that is not even a theoretical possibility. How can you, how can you fucking call something clean that could theoretically, uh, you know, just, just, burn its way through the earth in a matter of seconds. Anyway, my, my point here is that if you're going to choose where to spend your resources, I would spend it building five or ten fusion plants rather than bailing out a stupid fucktarded company like AIG or Citibank or JP Morgan Chase or any of those any of these others fucking fucktarded banksters I would put it to work doing real good Good for real people. Yeah, Even, well, whatever. Okay. I, uh, so what? Everybody can make the same argument, but I'm going to say that the the better investment would be uh, small-scale hydroelectric. So take the 80 billion dollars invested in that, and you might be getting somewhere. Ooh, speed racer. I like that. Well, I'd gladly, well, I'd gladly, I'd gladly I'd see gladly. small-scale hydroelectric. Anything, uh, anything, solar, hydro, hydro wind. Hey, yeah, we all get that wind, argument. I'm just saying, what, the, 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 you can't, there's no point. There's no point in crying over spilled politics. Okay, uh, guess what? We lost those elections. George Bush won. Get over it. Well, he may have. I've he, been disappointed yeah, in Obama, he, but I wouldn't call him George Bush. I mean, let's be realistic. I wasn't calling him George Bush. I didn't even get to Obama. Obama's nothing. Obama's not even a. It's not even a book stop. He's a nothing. He doesn't even exist. Hey, do you do? You, what do you think? Or do you have you even you followed think? this? Uh, this don't ask, don't tell thing where Obama's all like, I'm against it. It's going to end in my watch. And then the courts say, okay, it's over. And, and he's and his attorney general is like, no, no, please, with the state of that, we want to keep it. Yeah, well, that's the game they play with this thing. I mean, Clinton did the same thing, didn't he? I mean, he was backward, forward. He was all over the goddamn place. Well, no, because he said he would so end it. Would but end for him, it. don't ask, don't tell was at least, well, don't have a witch hunt. It was actually an increment forward. I mean, it was actually dead, and somebody else could have have, uh, have appealed. And it's, a, and it's the log cabin Republicans that stopped it or that brought the case. And then his attorney general is fighting it. That's, it's just, well, I think no, they're in an impossible than, circumstance, than. though. What's the, what's the alternative to don't don't ask, don't tell? Um, open homosexuality in the military? I mean, that's not going to work either. I mean, come on. You know, well, I mean, realistically, what's the worst you have to do? Well, realistically, how, how is that going to work? All right, you're going to have to interview the soldiers because you know we have fraternizing rules already i mean they're in there already gary that's the thing they're in there already but that but that's not the point the point is is if they validated pyro then how they're going to stop them from necking you know and doing all kinds of fucking shit no because they have it already together. it's already you know a man and a woman could get in trouble they do it anyway but there there are issues and so it has to be kept discreet <laughs> Yeah, but I'm just saying it's I just don't see any practicality to saying 
yes to homosexuality as an open thing in the military because it's just not practical. I mean, it just isn't. I actually am open to that argument.